So step one, I use Tamiya XF1 Black as a primer. I've never actually used actual primer. I plan to probably sometime soon. I picked up a lot of my methods from uh, Michael Reese's videos, and he always just primed with um, Revel's paints, like their black paint, so I just used Tamiya paint for this. This is all at real speed, and there'll be a lot of speeding up through this video. The airbrush I'm using is a $18 Harbor Freight siphon feed. I can basically only shoot very, uh, you know, single colors through it or clear coats. I have a couple of them. The rubber on the tires is painted uh, separately, so it's all primed in black, and then I would later glue the, the black rubbers back onto the, the wheel itself. This is the base coat, um, just Tamiya XF60. Sometimes people tend to think that it's not a terribly good color, but I, I like it just the way it is. You can mix it with XF55, which is buff, and you can do, you know, your own mixes of it, but I tend to like what it looks like once I put weathering stuff on it. So, um, yeah, just XF60. Again, the airbrush, though, is this um, very, very cheap siphon feed. So there it is, base coat done. Uh, you can actually see quite a strong um, seam down the barrel. I had to replace half of this kit midway through making it. It's a long story. The camouflage coat is done with field gray, which is XF65, which is different than I had normally done, but I always find that the uh, Tamiya dark green is too dark, um, and I like this much better. I think the, the play of those two colors together works a lot closer to what I see in my head as uh, two-tone German camo. This also was the first time I had ever used this Veda 120. So when I first shot it, you could see it kind of splotch a bit. Um, I had <laughs> I'd never practiced or anything, I just dropped paint in it, and it, it constantly leaks this brush. It's not a good airbrush. Uh, but I managed to make it work. This is all freeform camo, so I sort of just go around from bit to bit and just, you know, it, it's, it's not planned out really, you know, I just kind of do what I do. The closer you are, obviously, the, the less overspray you're going to get. So I went for sort of a medium closeness uh, because I, I couldn't, I didn't, I felt like I couldn't control the airbrush 100% um, like I wanted to. So, uh, you know, if I could have gotten closer and gotten harder edge camo, fine, but I was worried that it would splatter. So I just kind of feel out the distance I want to be at. Sorry about my hand being in front of the camera right here. Did the best I could with these painting videos. It's actually quite difficult. Um, I'm just putting a little splotch on each wheel. Going back to touch some stuff up. Now here I'm actually gluing the separate rubbers back onto the painted rims. Now you can see that the middle part will be not so black. There's a part I skipped and didn't film, which is that I just masked off the rims and then resprayed that middle part of the tire itself black again.
here is my camo done. Uh, I'm just checking it out, making sure that there's nothing glaring or like original plastic color showing through. So this is the um, two-tone chipping part one, so the lighter part of the chipping I do with just XF60 again because the combination of the black base undercoat with the yellow means that my sprayed Dunkel Gelb is actually a darker shade than straight up dabbed on Dunkel Gelb. So I just use the exact same paint. I don't even lighten it. Now what I did do wrong here is I didn't thin it at all so it gets kind of globby on me. So you can see that I actually have quite a bit of difficulty getting any paint onto the model. In the future I would thin it and I think I'd still use a lighter color anyway. Um, just because. But I do like the way that it chips away like you see on that left foot. That looks believable to me but without thinning it, it, it gave me a lot of problems. I'm using the scouring pad method because I like the randomness and the small uh, size of each chip but um, it also can go a little bit haywire on you if you're not very careful. I normally plan to have about two or three times more light colored chips than I would dark ones. Dark ones are just large chips, so the majority of my chipping will end up being just this color. Also, in, in this part, the wheels are on, and I had glued them on, and I had to rip them back off, because right here I'm getting yellow chipping on the rubber parts of the tires, and I didn't mean to do that. There's also a humongous um, mistake that I made that I never put in the video. Uh, there was just like some chips that were much, much too big, and I tried to, to fix and cover up. And In the end, I actually had to respray the entire model. So there are there's a little cut coming up right here where... I sort of just pretend like that never happened. I am chipping along the outer surfaces of all the main plates. I mean, that's chipping 101 is that things get chipped on the outside, so. Here you can see the wheels are back off, so I ripped the wheels back off, I oversprayed the parts that hadn't worked correctly. Um, and now I'm actually chipping with a brush, still with unthinned XF60. The, the advantage to that is that you won't accidentally just brush paint, you won't get large strokes. Uh, so things will look like chips. The, the negative part is that they'll have some height to them, which is not what a chip looks like. Although, if you're using it for dark chipping, it will raise above, like around, around the brown chips. Uh, dark brown in my case, which gives like a three-dimensional look like it got shot or dinged or something. Put a lot of focus there. So here's my German Camo Black Brown for the larger chipping, which is essentially meant to look like a rusted primer coat or just rusted out steel. This actually is thinned. This is model color, so you can mix that with water and it makes it a little easier to work with. I'm just brushing around outer surfaces, trying to make sure I stay within, for the most part, those lighter yellow lines. What matters is that things are small, and not round, and random. Those are the main things that, like, go through my head while I'm doing this. Again, all along the, the outer parts of plates, so the bottom surface, the sides of the gun, any outer edge that sticks out. The feet I wanted to be really chipped, so I went pretty heavy on there because in theory it would be constantly ramming up against the ground and rocks and things.
So you can see here that I actually kind of mess up a few. There are some spots that look just sort of like wet, painty spots, and then I go back and fix those later, or I can blend them out um, in later stages. So here I'm actually gluing for the second time the wheels on. Now, these are pre uh, already painted parts, so all I do is really just super oversaturate the areas with extra thin. I then normally try to put them together. They'll kind of stay, but you can see here like the paint is worn off of that middle spot. That's because I've already done this once. You kind of put it on, pull it back off, put more glue on. I mean, it's, it's, not, it's not a delicate process, but it does work. So, Panzerace's Old Wood and Dark Flesh are what I used for a combination of somewhat new looking shovel wood. This method I use as much as I can to try to mask the uh, surface behind the tool, handles and stuff. The other method I use is to use white glue to glue on the tools, um, do the base sprays, take them back off, hand paint them, you know, leaving the clamps, the original base colors and stuff, and then either CA or glue them back. This is natural steel and black. Now, I do not like the way this turned out. It's too dark. So sometimes it works for me and sometimes it doesn't. I'm trying to find a permanent solution, like a single colored paint that works. Uh, I eventually tried to blend it or fade it lighter with white oil paints. Not terribly successfully. So. That is what future looks like in the US currently, so here is my clear coat after chipping and detail painting. Not much to really watch here, but you know, I just use my old crappy airbrush again and just future it. I did, I think, two or three coats, so I only put one on this video, but I spray it, I let it cure, I do it again. Washes being successful for me depend greatly on a very, very glossy clear coat. So that is brown and black oil paints mixed together and AK thinner. So I'm doing a very, very careful pin wash. Just around the details. Um, it's working very well during this part. It might be a little on the light side. I thought about doing another pin wash with um, thinning, aka um, streaking grime. Actually, makes a really, really nice wash. And I thought about doing another one because this oil one came out a little um, subtle. So if you're using a very light colored vehicle, I tend to like these subtle ones, something like a DAC vehicle or um, buff, like real. I, I use Tamiya Buff for, but really late war Dunkel Gelbs, the ones that are bordering on like tan. Look, tend to look really cool with sort of a, a subtle wash. So I'm adding some more to the wheels because they would be the grimiest part in theory because they're constantly rotating and hitting the road. And you can see that I'm having some trouble removing some spots on those spokes. So I go and get more thinner. Just clean it up a bit better. Overall a pretty subtle wash but I think it was successful. Now I'm doing uh, dot filter with oil paints. Now these are the most generic cheap oil paints ever. I'm not sure where I found them, but they're not good. So I'm using white and yellow ochre as my primaries. Tiny bit of a dark brown. And I think one or two green dots. The green I have is very bright, so I tend not to like it. You can see here that the, the yellow is overwhelming all the other tones. So I blend it pretty well. Uh, it, you know, you, you almost start to lose the, the, you know, the effect you're going for by blending it so much, but you just, you need to do that. But I decide right after this that I need some more white. That tends to give it the more rain streak look. And it, it, it also, it looks like faded yellow, the white, so. That was the tone that I wanted to bring out the most. Admittedly, I did um, here on the legs. When I came back to this the next day, I, I think I I wasn't terribly successful blending some of these whites in, so it sort of looks like it spent a winter in Wisconsin. It's got almost like salt damage. You know, you just see it sort of white on the legs, but uh, I blended it down a little bit, so I'm not too worried about it. 
but it's uh, be very cautious when blending oils because in the moment you may think you've gotten it good enough and then um, you may come back tomorrow or the next day and see that you didn't quite blend them well enough and if you're foolish in clear coat before you reactivate and blend it out which i i did you're kind of stuck with it so here i'm blending in some whites and yellows into the barrel So there you can see the, the legs have kind of a powdery white on them. Uh, right there I was cleaning off the largest chip because I wanted to make it harsher. And now here I'm going back again with um, Vallejo's German Camo Black Brown model color. And then just uh, trying to add tiny little secondary layer of chipping. Like so that there's kind of a, a contrast of different types of chips. Old and newer ones. And any spots that have been kind of bugging me the whole time, I would go back and try to change that shape. So this is AK Rust Streaks. I only wanted to do a few. That's, by the way, too much of that on that spot. You don't want that much, but I used too large of a brush. So luckily you were able to blend it out pretty easily. Like, it's funny, if you watch that within the first few swipes down, that's what I want. And I know that that's what I want. Here I had a little bit harder time. I wanted, there's two large chips along the top. And again, having trouble getting what I want really, so it took me a couple more tries right there, just looks like stained rust. But. Uh, this is my pigment pass. This um, is a special mix I made of Vallejo pigments. It's a cup, just a black and a few browns. I'm sure that there is someone that makes a brown that tone, but I can't seem to find one in my local store, so I just mixed one up that I like. I do plan to use um, dirt from where I live for a dio of this piece, so I'm a little. I didn't want to overdo it with pigments because I need to blend it into the groundwork, which will be actual dirt. There I'm adding uh, AK Spirits to settle in the pigments. Now I like to just brush them in and work them in, but I also like to seal them. So what I'll do is do a pass through the white spirit and then go back and do another dusting on top of that to give it like a different texture. Now I'm just adding a little bit of black to the muzzle. And that is it. All painted and weathered. 